Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam, and on behalf of Book Soup, I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight for tonight's event with Noah Eisenberg in conversation with Sam Watson, here to discuss Noah's new book, Billy Wilder on Assignment. We'll be hosting more virtual events in the near future, and you can learn more about them on our website by signing up for our email newsletter, as well as following us on social media at Book Soup, or you can follow us right here on Crowdcast as well. Our next event is this coming Friday at 6 p.m. with Grace Maselli in conversation with Jordan Sondler discussing how to deal with fear, failure, and other daily dreads. Past events are also available on our YouTube channel. Tonight's event will end with a Q&A, and to submit a question, please use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the screen. And if you see a question on the list you'd like for our speakers to answer, please click the Like button to bump it up in the queue, and we will try to answer as many questions as time will allow. And please also feel free to engage with each other and the conversation in the chat area. Also, please support Book Soup and our authors tonight by purchasing a copy of tonight's featured book, which you can do by clicking the green purchase button right below the viewer screen. It'll redirect you to our website where you can finish the checkout process. And we're also selling digital audiobooks and ebooks through Libro FM and Kobo for those interested. And we are also open for in-store browsing. So if you're in Los Angeles, please come see us 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, and we'd love to see you. And with that said, let me introduce our guest for this evening. Noah Eisenberg is the George Christian Centennial Professor and Chair of the Department of Radio, Television, Film at the University of Texas at Austin. His many books include We'll Always Have Casablanca and Weimar Cinema. Thank you for being with us, Noah. And our other guest tonight is Sam Wasson, who is the author of many books, including the best-selling Fosse, Fifth Avenue, 5 AM, Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's, The Dawn of the Modern Woman, and The Big Goodbye, Chinatown in the Last Years of Hollywood, among others. And he lives in Los Angeles. Thank you, Sam. And Thank without further ado, I'm going to turn the camera over to Sam and Noah. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Really excited to have you both. Thank you, Samantha. Appreciate the kind introduction. Sammy, my dog is trying to get. <laughs> I'm Let him in. I'm, I'm out. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm out in the in the back house here. This is where we are in uh, this uh, virtual world of ours. And you'll need to forgive me, but uh, she's otherwise going to whine throughout. I, I heard that. I think there was a a, a plane flying over. And yeah, I, I had a dog. Plane. Anyway, it's terrific to see you, Sammy, and thank you so much for doing this. Hello, everyone. We've got lots to talk about. Let me let Haribo, the kids named the dog after the German gummy bear company. Anyway, let me let, let me let her in, and then and then we'll continue. All right, let Haribo in. Yes. Um, I'll 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 jump in by saying I uh, found out about this book. I haven't even told you this, Noah. I found out about this book because I have a. I only have one Google search. You know, you you what a Google search. Yes. I, I yes. That. The only Google search I have is for Billy Wilder. So uh -huh. when, whenever a new Billy Wilder something pops up, I'm alerted to it. And I saw this book and I went nuts. I got so excited. And then I got doubly excited because then I discovered that you had written it. And Noah, for those of you at home, in addition to being my friend, was my film one of my film professors at Wesleyan. We, we studied... Wilder, Noah is one of the people who turned me on to Wilder, and in so doing, you know, helped to, to help to make me what what the beauty that that you you sit before tonight, uh, <laughs> uh, um, and and we're we're all here because we love Wilder, obviously. And um, when I found that this, first of all, I didn't even know. Well, let, let, let's before we get into how this all came to be. I think it's important to sort of to to remind us why why we are here. Why is it? I'm, I mean, why, why is this night different from all I was the just, nights? That I was just going to say, why on this night do we, <laughs> do we celebrate we, Billy Wilder? Yeah. Uh, what, look, it, it, it's not just the 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 six Oscars, that's for sure. Plus the Thalberg award. It's not just the awards. And, and as he said, late in life, I love it. I'm going to show you in just a bit. I'll share a screen. And you'll get to see some of the early crossword puzzles that Billy himself did as a young man. But he said it wasn't those awards. It was that he appeared twice, twice, not once, but twice in the New York times crossword puzzle, once across and once down. Um, no, it's not, it's not, it's not that it's not the awards. It's, it's, it's the, the films that we hold so dear. Um, 
and his work as as one of Hollywood's greatest uh, screenwriters and, 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 and greatest directors. Um, and I think that that is why we go back. And, and, the, and, and also, the, the, let us not forget just the, the incredible range. Um, he was not wedded to a single genre. And in fact, I was just recently, I spoke with Paul Diamond today for, for an hour. It was our first time meeting telephonically. This is, is Diamond's son. Uh, interviewing him for the for the next part of the Some Like It Art book, but 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 just kind of making our initial acquaintance, and he did a great interview uh, with 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 Billy in um, the, the 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 late nine, 96, I want to say in Fade in in the magazine Fade, in. and and in it Wilder is talking and he says, look, you know, for most directors, and I don't think he was merely tooting his horn late in life, but he says, you know. Double indemnity, some like it hot. You'd normally think, oh, this must have been this guy's cousin or brother. You know, it can't be the same person who would make these two films. And those are but two examples of an extremely long and 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 varied career. Um, and I remember now going back to to our uh, to our Wesleyan days when you were uh, a college student. You know, the attraction to Wilder for a lot of students. It was already. I think in you then, and it's hilarious your story about Google having just one one Google Google search is Wilder. Um, it's it it's that the, there's so much to learn from a, from a from a Wilder movie, and I don't mean to make it into this sort of overly cerebral exercise because he is a born entertainer and a born raconteur, and that's reflected in his in his in his, in his movies as well. But there is just you know I, I remember vividly. Uh, showing Double Indemnity, you know, a film that I show frequently, I teach, I teach noir, and just watching the students kind of in, in a state of near, near rapture, just, just seeing every, everything from the, the, the just the, the incredibly uh, snappy and memorable lines of dialogue to the acting by Barbara Stanwyck and, and, and Edward G. Robinson and, and, and Fred McMurray, of course. Um, uh, to to John Seitz's amazing cinematography, but without ever being showing, that was something that, as you presumably know, Sammy Billy was very very adamant about. He didn't feel, and he, it's funny he says so as well in that that interview that I just mentioned moments ago with with Paul Diamond. He says, you know, you don't want to put that camera behind a fireplace. Well, <laughs> and we know, yeah. and we know we've seen a camera behind a fireplace. It was I think just a, a light jab at, at old Orson. But uh, or, or for that matter, Greg Toland. But but I, I, for for Wilder, it, 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 it's all about story. It's all about that incredible ability to tell a great story, regardless of whether it's you know a noir like Double Indemnity, whether it's a, a, one of the greatest and darkest satires of Holly, Hollywood in, in Sunset Boulevard, um, whether it's and this will eventually take us back to his years as a journalist, but whether he's you know, depicting the hard-boiled uh, journalist in, in Chuck Tatum, uh, Kirk Douglas's role in Ace in the Hole, um, whether it's Witness for the Persecution or Foreign Affair, and his, you know, his his working with Marlene, the great Marlene Dietrich. Um, oh God, iconic iconic scenes from 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 not a great movie, in my my opinion, but 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 still iconic scenes uh, from the Seven Year Itch. Yeah, um, not a great movie, no. Yeah. No, no, but 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 some really really great 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 scenes. I think uh, some casting choice. I mean, we could we could quibble, but 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 that's what I think people think of when they think of of, of Wild. And they may they may on top of it. I mean, I was immediately to sort of take the, the six Oscars off the table, but they may also know that this is somebody who has just been incredibly successful. Uh, not each and every picture was an extraordinary hit and uh, you know a popular and critical success, but so many of them were. Is there something about Billy, and I, this is, and, and I really mean this as a real question, is there something about Billy that gets Americans and America better than m many, many or most Americans of, of, of comedy? Of yeah. his, that's always been a, an ironic uh, or, or sort of a troublesome thing that's fascinated me about Billy, is that fair to say these are very American movies, even though they come from, you know, this very German guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, in his case, the German, German was his language, but he was, you know, he was a, a child of Austria. Yeah, but still, I mean, I know yes, what you mean. You. Yes. Um, 
and and part of that 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 group of of of, of German speaking transplants who wound up in in Hollywood during the Hitler years and in the case of Lubitsch and others a few, few you know a few years before um, but yes I mean I think his films are quintessentially American it's funny somebody in the chat I just noticed also wrote you know the apartment the apartment one of the greatest movies of all time for sure at least in my book um, but very much indebted to his years working as a freelance reporter in Weimar Berlin yeah so let's go so let's history. go back to that let's I yeah. mean the, what was so uh, uh, what what was so emotional for me reading the book as a as a Wilder lover, someone who knows the ending, yeah. but never knew the beginning, is that reading these pieces, you can absolutely see, and it's right there in black and white. This does not take you know subtle parsing and close reading. You can absolutely see the man and the writer yeah. that he, that would make all of these movies. Uh, yeah. Uh, that 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 we love is, is that what was is that why you endeavored this book well yeah i thought look i i had you know this from the wesleyan days you know i began as uh at berkeley the time that i finished my phd in the mid 90s there was no phd program in film and media studies not yet and so i focused on film but i focused on german and austrian film and did a phd in in, in, in german studies and so i had access from my you know at the very latest from my my graduate uh, uh, studies uh, until you know the first the first uh, uh, you know major research projects you know that 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 decade long undertaking writing writing the book on 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 Edgar G Omer with whom Wilder collaborated and people on Sunday um, and 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 having the you know the good fortune of writing the 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 liner notes for for the criteria as you did for some like it hot exquisitely. Um, but I drew on these texts when I was doing, so working on the, the Omer biography, working on those liner notes. And I realized at that time that this is just, uh, <laughs> it was a shande. It was yeah. a shande that, 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 you know, that, that Anglo-American audiences had no access. And this I didn't know they existed. I yeah, just didn't is, know they existed. This is where Shelley, where Shelley Frisch steps in. And she did an exquisite job. Hats off to Shelley, prize-winning translator, who is just, uh, I mean, and, and, and Wilder is, you, you, what you were saying moments ago, Sammy, is so, so true, because not only do you see it on the page, but you can hear his voice, and you can hear mm -hmm. his voice already as a 19-year-old, and then early into, into his early, early, early to mid-1920s, when he begins starting to, to, to write freelance, you know, uh, screenplays. Um, but you hear it, and you get a sense of all that, uh, you know, that, that, that mordant wit, um, that mischief, that kind of puckishness, all of that is there. And I have to say thanks in large measure to Shelley, to Shelley Fish, who really, she rendered his prose in such, um, it, it, you know, it, it's so animated, it's so colorful, and it really reflects a lot of the verve and spirit that you, that you would find or that I found as somebody who could read the German on the page there. And now we have it in English. And that's, that's just a, that, that's a, a COVID. That's a, that's a gift. That's a blessing. <laughs> so you you have been keeping this secret from us for years, basically. <laughs> you have been sitting on the gold. Why? How, how did it come that you shared it now? Was there a particular reason why now? Well, or, or uh, just Shelley, I, look, I, I'm not a terribly talented. Tra I've done my you know, tried my hand in translation. I just don't have the skill for it. I don't have the sits flesh or the patience for it either, I think. But I just, it's, 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 for me, it is, it is really taxing work. And I just, it, it's hard, for, I get a whole great amount of pleasure, as, as you may know, in, in, in writing. And I really love that. And that, and I find in the translation, I just don't have it. And so it was so, so great to take this project and get in touch with Shelley and see whether she would be interested. She responded so enthusiastically and 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 really, I mean, her ability to translate at, and at the speed at which she translated. I mean, this project was basically from beginning to end. I don't think it was much more than a year, which is really really yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. But I think it broke records for me at least. Um, and the people at, at, at Princeton University Press, uh, our editor there, Anne Savarese, was just immediately receptive. Was really eager to snap it up. It would have been a hard hard sell, I think. Um, for a lot of trade presses, but I think Princeton is the perfect home for it. I think it, it really strikes that balance where you can have students like your former self and, and 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 scholars work with this book, but also it really appeals to the to the popular, you know, to that to that ever elusive educated reader and the popular audience. And so I think everybody has something to discover 
will you, in this book. Will you tell the story because it is a scene out of a Billy Wilder movie, and and we're going to talk about how a lot of what is written is are does seem to be scenes out of Billy Wilder movie. Will you tell the story of how Billy got the job? Oh, <laughs> well, it's Billy's story. And, it's Billy's uh, story. Yeah, yeah. It is his story, um, and he told it uh, in an interview. I, I I I can't attach a date to the interview, but this was when he was long a successful American screen, you know, writer, director, and sort of looking back to his days as, uh, you know, somebody who just recently had finished up his matura, which is the diploma you do in, 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 in Austria. There's Harry Bo shaking in the back. Um, and, and, and had this fleeting fantasy. I thought initially thought he could be, maybe he could be a foreign correspondent or something for a newspaper. This would be his ticket to America. So initially he thought that, then they're like, uh, English? Do you have English? No, no English. So that, 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 that one quickly fizzled. He wasn't going to do that. So instead, at, at the age of 19, and, and, and uh, as I say in the introduction, as someone who really clearly very early on had the, the proverbial gift of gab and, and didn't take no, you know, you can think of Walter Neff with his attache case making his way into Mrs. G. Tuxin's house uh, in, in the first act of, of Double Indemnity. And he talked his way in and uh, he gets into the editorial office. Apparently it was a weekend and and a, a certain Herr Liebstöckel, who was the drama critic, he ends up somehow getting into his office. And at that moment in time, Herr Liebstöckel is having sex with his secretary, uh, who, as the story goes, looks at young Billy and says, good thing I was working overtime today. So and that's, that's, that's the story he, he was assigned. And in fact, he tells a similar story. He tells a similar story about making his way into the picture business um, to, 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 to Paul Diamond in that interview that I keep mentioning, where he, he, there was a, 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 a Herr Galitzenstein was the name. <laughs> these, these names are too great. These are Billy's names. And yeah. then there's Galitzenstein. And Galitzenstein is apparently a, a, a one of the studios, he may be at UFA, I'm not sure which studio, presumably UFA. And Billy was renting in Charlottenburg in a pretty nice district of, of, of Berlin, is renting a room and he shares you know, with a family and there's an, a daughter who apparently sneaks home visitors in the night. And one night she brings home this Herr Galitzenstein and young Billy sees him, knows that he's a studio exec and basically traps him in his room before you know it has sold him has sold him a script and so i mean this you get all of the 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 the, the chutzpah and mm -hmm. the and, and the drive mm -hmm. and the humor mm -hmm. of 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 billy wilder in mm -hmm. these early pieces it's 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 all there um one of the, it's all one there, the including the uh, oh, questions oh. in the chat was about whether he wrote on news stories and that he did not do, but he did write on features and he wrote on movies and he wrote on theater and he wrote on on jazz and, and, and on, on dance troops and 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 and, uh, and all that and his own. I mean, the, 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 the volume, as you know, Sammy opens with this four four part series that he did for the Berliner Zeitung am, am Mittag, the, the one of the one of the, uh, the of the major newspapers of Berlin on his, his experience as a dancer for hire. Um, and, 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 and so he, he, he writes about that, that, that experience of, you know, not really, as he, as he put it, he said, I didn't have the best dance moves, but I had, I had the best dialogue. That's what he said. Like, like, and, that, and that's he, really the filmmaker. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Yeah, He's charming yeah. these young women and elderly women, women who are there who don't have someone to dance with. And late in life, he would claim that this was not just dancing, but you know, this is part was a gigolo. But it's also then anticipating the, you know, the way that he would go on to cast the film and write the film for people on Sunday, in which you have Wolfgang, who's a wine merchant, but also is something of a of a of a gigolo. Um, I'm going to share a screen if I may, because I think it might be interesting for people to see some of these. We can please please continue to ask questions. Uh, or, or, or continue the conversation, Sammy. I already announced my, to, earlier on that I cannot multitask, so I need to focus well, on one well, thing. Well, the gigolo. I'm glad you brought that up because that, to me, is the is the DNA is 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 the DNA of Billy Wilder. That that story right there. And I had heard about it my whole life. He talked about it, and uh, I, I didn't know if it actually existed. And the fact that it does is so thrilling, but also leads me to wonder. You know. 
how much of this material do you think is 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 true i mean how much of this is it's so close to billy's fiction that it raises the question is there any way to know if this is if this is real or does it even matter i guess the the, the short answer would be it, it doesn't really matter but this is a question that we've sort of been uh wrestling with uh we shelly and i because we've asked people asked us a lot and when, when she was translating these texts and when i've been asked to comment on these texts as the editor um you know how much of this is really billy writing or is this a sort of this is a sort of his alter right. ego yeah uh and i think it's a combination mm. i think it's a combination um i mean it's billy's voice and it's you definitely hear it. billy's voice yeah um yeah i'm, I'm still trying i want I, I tried in vain there uh to to um let me see here to pull up those images which I i'm like. going to ask you a question um uh that that come that comes did 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 Wilder's friendship with Walter Reich influence his career? Well, well certainly they already in Weimar Berlin they collaborated on one of Billy's early sound pictures um, with Lillian Harvey. I'm blonde Traum, a blonde, blonde dream. I don't know what that's that's a that's a that's a wooden track <laughs> again demonstrating my total lack of skills as a translator. I don't know what the release title was. Uh, on these shores, um, but they worked together on that. And then, of course, as you know, because you're a big fan of, of Lubitsch, I know Sammy and Ninochka, uh, Charlie Brackett, who was then Wilder's writing partner, and Walter Reich uh, had a hand in that in that script. Um, the shared screen, for whatever reason, doesn't really like me. Let's see. If, can, can you see that now? Well, I can see. Let's it see. I'm gonna put me like, like, oh, there we go. Can you there see it? Go. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, you can see there that. we go. Perfect. We got the All crossword right. I'm puzzle. I'm so happy now. It's working. So I'd mentioned, I'm sorry, and we'll come back to Walter Reich, I promise. Um, but but I mentioned the the his writings, initial assignments that he got after, you know, walking on the, uh, in on that certain Herr Liebstück or having sex with his secretary. Um, he began to contribute uh, uh, crossword puzzles, I mentioned. Here's a, I didn't, somehow Max Reinhardt hasn't come up yet. Uh, but there is that Dr. Hans Liebstöckel. He's the second from left. That's the guy. That's the man. Can't you see it in him? That guy. <laughs> um, but 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 uh, they were photographed for one of the two tabloids in Vienna to which young Billy contributed. This is the Bühne, the stage. The other is called Die Stunde, the hour. And um, they were both uh, owned by a, a Hungarian newspaper magnate by the name of. Imre Bekeshi was known to be quite a, a shifty guy. Um, and here you can see young Billy's visiting card when wow. he was at the Stunde. Um, and, 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 and Sammy, you may know this. I mean, you actually, you share his, his, his original first year. I'll, I'll leave it there Probably. for a second. You, you share his original, that's what the S is there, is he was born right. Samuel. Uh, or presumably called Shmuel, and right. and uh, and uh, his mother, however, a colossal fan of all things American, who had spent a formative period of her youth living with an uncle in New York City on Madison Avenue, and is said to have taken in a a one of the traveling road shows of Buffalo Bill's Wild West tour, uh, and, and thus took to, to calling her son uh, Billy. And, and spelled as it is here, and you maybe noted too on the crossword puzzle, and you can see in this, this Tiller Girls piece that I'm about to show you if, you, if your eyes are better than mine, it's always with IE. In fact, mm -hmm. he just signs as he does to the crossword puzzle, and here too, just, just Billy, not even Wilder, Wilda, as he was called. Um, but this is a piece from, from Die Bühne, from the stage. This is on the arrival of the, of the Tiller Girls at Vienna's Westbahnhof railway station. Um, Wilder, a mere 19 years of age, uh, goes to greet these Manchester-born, all, the all-girl dance troupe uh, uh, from the UK uh, and, and writes about it with a sense of excitement and glee. And it fo follows up with an additional piece in which he interviews members of the Tiller Girls. And for those of you, as you certainly do, Sammy, as, as you know, uh, uh, some Like It Hot, it's, it's really not a far cry to, to think of... Uh, you know, Marilyn Monroe sauntering yeah. down that platform about yep. to board the Florida Limited in that Chicago uh, a train station. You were saying something, yeah. Sammy. No, I'm just agreeing with you. I'm just agreeing with you. Absolutely. You can see the movie taking shape in his mind, you know? I mean, 
not even consciously or consciously. It's it's impossible not to make that association. Yeah, and no, that's I, I I I agree, and I think you, you really get the germs of a lot of other inspired ideas that he would take up as a screenwriter director in you know in Hollywood. Um, his ticket out of Vienna and to Berlin came in the form of this rather rotund figure filling out much of the frame here. That's that's Paul Whiteman and his orchestra. They uh, uh, came to, v this was the Viennese leg of their tour. Young Billy, who's the second from right, he's looking, he's got that kind of cocksure grin yep. in his face and he's doing his best, I think, to look just as American as the rest of the members of the, of, of the band. Um, he, he, he did a, a profile of, of Whiteman while he was in, in, in Vienna and Whiteman and an interview and Whiteman liked it so much that he invited him to join to join uh, uh, him and his band members on on the Berlin leg of his of his of his European tour. Um, and, and, and Billy promptly uh, took him up on that offer, went to Berlin in the summer of 1926 and ended up hanging his hat in Berlin for 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 many more years. Uh, seven years, in, basically, until the rise of, 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 of Hitler in January of 33. Um, he wrote a piece in Berlin when he arrived there, follow-up on, on the Whiteman Orchestra, playing at the Große Schauspielhaus, one of the big venues, colossal venues, grand venues of Berlin. And he wrote specifically about their performance of Rhapsody in Blue and how the audience uh, could, was made up of thousands of people uh, kept giving more and more standing ovations. It's a, it's, it's, it's a lovely piece in there. Really because of his, of his tendency to pace and, and already as a young man to kind of flit about with bursts of, of intense speed, he became to be known, he took on the moniker of Der Rasende Reporter, the racing reporter. Yeah. And here you have a, uh, uh, a caricature of Billy losing his hat, running at a at a, at a rapid speed. A racing reporter there. Um, this is in fact my translation, but I did consult with Shelley on it. Uh, a minute later, I'm standing in the hallway. I recap all details. Then I grab the pencil out of my breast pocket and hurl it into the basement, two floors below. Uh, again, speed, chaos, uh, frenetic energy. Yes. Um, this yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Sammy. No, no, no. It's it's action. It's action writing, which which also makes it so just right next door to screenwriting. It, Very much so. It's such an excellent point. And in fact, one of the 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 tabloids to which he contributed in the second half of the 1920s was a a a, a glossy, an illustrated sort of like look, if you like, uh, magazine called Tempo, and that was the perfect yeah. fit for 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 for, for Billy. Um, the late Peter Gay, who was one of the early historians of, of the Weimar Republic, cultural historians of the Weimar Republic, he, he, he remarked that, 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 that Tempo was a magazine that also came, people referred to it simply as the Jüdische Hast, and that's Jewish haste, Jewish speed. Mm. And I think you can see in the racing reporter an, an, an example of that. This is the, the four-part uh, series that then was reprinted in the Viennese tabloid, Die Bühne, but it's a Herr Ober bitte einen Tänzer, a waiter, a dancer, please. And it opens up the, the, the volume, Billy Wilder on assignment. Um, you and I, Sammy, were talking about this briefly. This is one of the early credited screenplays. Credit is early. Uh, he he done free, he done some freelance, but it mainly as a as a as a uh, ghostwriter. That's the term that escaped my mind. But here he's actually credited. And again, if you've got good eyes better eyes than mine, you can see that it says Manuscript Billy, Billy Wilder. Billy Wilder. Um, this was for Ernst Lemley, who is nephew of Uncle Carl Lemley of Universal Studios, um, Der Teufel's Report, a hell of a reporter. And the thing that we were talking about, Sammy, is you can see here, second from left, there is the young Billy doing a cameo. Um, the film starred an American actor named Eddie Polo, which sounds like it has to be a pseudonym, but that was his given name. Um, and it's very much based on Billy's own experiences as a, you know, hard boiled uh, newspaper man of sorts. And, and I think very much trying to emulate some of the swagger that he'd seen coming from the other side of, of the Atlantic. Um, this is and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of the shared screen. If you'll just allow me two last bits here, Sammy, real quick. This is one of the, the, the there's a, a lovely piece in the, in the collection that's called Berlin Rendezvous. And it, it kind of, it, it spells out these three, four favored spots for your, rom, you know, romantic trysts. Um, and you can almost picture Love in the Afternoon, but Love in the Afternoon actually, as fate would have it, 
is based on a play by Claude Anet, who's another playwright, French playwright, that Billy Wilder also profiles in this collection. But in Berlin Rendezvous, he's writing about these places, and among them is this Normal, Normal Uhr. This is the oversized clock at the Berlin Zoologische Garten. And you can see now, this is the final thing I'm going to show you. It's about a two-minute clip from Menschen am Sonntag, People on Sunday, uh, that the young Billy Wilder scripted, working together with Robert Siodmak, Edgar G. Ulmer, Fred Zinnemann, who was the assistant cameraman to Eugen Schriftan. And here, here's the two-minute clip. And you'll see that exact spot one more time where he has the two, the two, the two, the two characters, non-professional actors, Wolfgang and Christel, have their little romantic trees. So here it is. And there, the romantic tryst. Uh, there we go. Uh, takes place. Let me let me let me see if I can uh, go back to. Oops, oops. Sorry. I want us to return now, which I will do. Uh, hover here. <laughs> Doesn't like me. One second. As you do that, I want to read a comment on the side of the screen. Maybe you all can read it, but it's it's worth giving voice to. Uh, thank you for writing about this part of Billy's life. Just like Sam Fuller, newspaper writers learned how to cut to the chase and tell a story well. I think that's absolutely. I think that's absolutely right. There's no fat in any of these pieces. They're short. They're mean, and they're and they're lean. And um, I I I think that gives. That's also part of their Americanness. They don't. They they have somewhere to go and something to do, and and time is money. Uh, and B B those are in there. So that Fuller comparison, I think, is really right on the money. I mean, journalists do make great screenwriters. We, we see that from, I don't know, the time of, of Ben Hecht onward, and, and there, I'm sure there were others before. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, and, you know, you know late, late in life, he'll, he'll, take out, he'll do his rendition of the, of the front page. Um, the, that, the, 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 the pe people on Sunday, and I hope the two minutes wasn't too indulgent, and there may be some questions in the chat. Uh, when I tried to come back, I, I dropped off for a moment. I was worried I was going to get spit out on the Jersey Turnpike, like being John Malkovich. But somehow, I think it must have been Samantha. She brought she brought me back in. Um, but that that love letter to, to to Berlin, kind of on the eve of apocalypse, I think it also gives you a sense. Sorry to pivot just a little bit from. No, the, no, no. I was just filling in the emptiness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, when I when I drop suddenly drop. Yeah. Sorry. 
<laughs> no, it's okay. I, I, I obviously I hit the wrong button. <laughs> no, um, no. But 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 I think that that, that that you get a sense of the world that he was inhabiting here. Um, and it was a world, again, I keep coming back to that interview with 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 Paul Diamond, but he says it was a world of hustle and tumult. Th those, those are Billy's words when describing, you know, the world that he occupied in in in, in these late 19, 1920s. I didn't put the release date for some reason on that slide slide. Shame on me. Uh, it debuted at the Ufa Palast um, Tzu, uh, uh, at, uh, excuse me, Ufa Palast and Kufus and Dam at, at uh, uh, February of 1930. And so it really is the eve of, of, of I mean, these are the, 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 the last good years um, mm. before Hitler's stunning ascent to power in, in, in January of 33. And the collection here has pieces that, that Wilder um, was writing all the way up to that point. And one of the questions Sammy, that I've heard, and it was from an Italian journalist most recently, she asks, she said, D -d -d when, when, when did he stop writing journalism? And, and the answer is, I had to think for a moment, um, because initially I misspoke and I said, oh, no, no, he actually switched. You can see the transition to writing screenplays. That's not true. He's doing them simultaneously until the moment that he actually flees Germany. And I think that this is something that we talked about in that seminar in exile, um, but he, he lost his language. And once he lost his language, he could no longer contribute. So when he was in Paris in 1934, um, he managed to continue some of his film work. He did move his, uh, Gren, but he did not write journalism. And when he gets to America, same thing. And that's why he yeah. collaborates initially with, you know, Charles, Charles Brackett, Charlie Brackett, um, native born, you know, son of a New York Senator, member of the Algonquin round table, uh, former New Yorker theater critic. He does work with him and he says, you know, uh, Brackett, uh, what's one of the lines he says, that Brackett would, 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 would teach me English, I would teach him comedy. And so <laughs> that was basically the way that worked. And also it's funny, you're there, uh, you know, I'm also a, a native son of that wonderful city of angels. And I remember listening on my transistor radio to Dodgers games and, and uh, you know, Vince Gully, that, 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 that inimitable voice of Vince Gully. Turns out that much of, of Wilder's uh, language acquisition when he arrived in, 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 in 34 uh, at the age of, of 20, 28 years old was was listening to sports, sports, sports announcers, listening to, 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 to sport games on the, you know, baseball games and whatnot uh, on the radio. And I think you get us that you were talking moments ago about that sort of the jauntiness or the the, the sort of man on the move and all that. I think that the, 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 the sports, uh, I mean, he was attracted to sports. Or he was attracted to gambling, he was attracted to boxing. But I think that, that that listening to these sports announcers and that sort of that staccato speech, those clips. And jazz that, is a part of this too. Billy's a huge jazz fan. Yeah, ab absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 what takes him to Berlin. It's the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. Um, I'm looking. Are you looking at the chat at all? I don't want to neglect people. No, I am looking at the chat, and I wanted to make one. I you you did fully cover the question about did Wilder cover any hard news stories? <clears throat> yeah. Um, do you think it did it? Well, it didn't influence his later storytelling because he didn't really do it. But let me, let me, um, we, we've touched on, we touched on the girls. We've touched on the speed, you know, um, uh, the one, the, another thrilling facet of this book is that you get wilder writing about movies. Yeah. And well, it's good that you say that because I think it was a critic, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember, I don't want to. <laughs> Has been, there's been some wonderful press. In fact, you've even contributed some of that, Sammy. Thank you so much. But I think it was in the journal, if I'm not mistaken, the Wall Street Journal, where there was a, a it was, that wasn't a, a, a cranky. It was, I mean, it's a legitimate, you, you don't need to love everything, but there was at least one critic who said that those capsule reviews, the third part of the anthology, where he's writing about contemporary movies and theater, um, you know, writing about Brecht, writing about uh, Stroheim, writing about all um, that that you know that that's really just for maybe you know it's almost like I, back to back back to baseball sort of inside baseball or or you know that this is just for the completest or and I really really disagree I think it's very very helpful for us to see how he's responding even in you know two two hundred words or less in these capsule reviews um, that that we've included in the in the in the final part so I'm happy to hear you say it no I don't I feel redeemed. I didn't read the the Wall Street Journal. I completely disagree. I had, <laughs> I had, I, I, in addition to it being, in addition to it being illuminating, it was also emotionally very meaningful 
to see Billy, you know, although he, he doesn't cover Lubitsch in your book, he, he calls him the Almighty One, if I remember, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah, well, uh, that comes from Von, the way that people would pronounce his name, you know, Von. He became Von. Von in the German, Von is, was Von like Von. He becomes the, the One, Von. Wait, not Von Sternberg, Lubitsch? Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh. I was joking about von Strohan. Sorry, now we've got von Sternberg, von Strohan. Oh, von Sternberg, von Strohan, okay. and then Lubitsch. No, Lubitsch, of course, was his god, was God. Lubitsch was God. And, and, uh, um, uh, all, but but the one that really hits is when you see him write about the woman who would become Norma Desmond. Yes, exactly. Well, that's yeah. in the von Strohan piece. And he's talking about, among other things, Queen Kelly. And Paramount would pay, according to Billy, a thousand dollars for the rights to do the home movie scene with Bill Holden and Gloria Swanson on the couch watching what film Queen Kelly. And so you can again, there's another moment where you get a sense of these embryonic, you know, sort of the 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 the, the, the germs of these ideas that would later be hatched in in, in Hollywood. Yeah, I I uh, I uh, put in the chat that what would Lubitsch do? You know that. The, the the sign that that, that famously uh, you know hung in his in his Beverly Hills office. What would Lubitsch do? Now, now and that's always, sign. Go ahead. I want to ask you about the sign, but go well, ahead. I always read, and I think it's in Sickoff, and I consider Sickoff to be a very, as you know, you love the Sickoff biography. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I consider it to be uh, very reliable. I always thought that it was designed by Saul Bass. You know, that's what I heard. For, that's what I heard. Yeah. For for Hitchcock, Vertigo, and for many many other uh, films. I then was speaking with someone in Paris last week who said, "No, no." It's not, it's, it's, it's Saul, Saul Steinberg, not Saul Bass, but I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. So, maybe Google can tell us, or maybe one of our, our maybe one of our, our, our listeners will, would, it will be faster on the computer. Yeah. Uh, I, well, um, the, the other thing I was going to ask you is, um, um, do you know where the sign is? Well, I never was in that office. I wish I had been, but, but, but I think that, you know, Cameron Crowe in his conversation with Wilder, I think he references it there. Um, it, it apparently was very, very prominently displayed. It was definitely, yes, I know it was in the office, but you know where it is now? Oh, where it is now? That's a very yeah. good question. No, I, I, not. Um, the Herrick, maybe? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Um, a, a, another question I was going to, Billy always talked about, um, claimed to have interviewed Freud. And Adler. Right? And Schnitzler. And, yes, in one, yes. And, and Richard Strauss, all in one day. Yes, well, he made that claim. And we have no evidence that... Uh, no corroborating evidence. Okay, no. okay, okay. But, uh, but he clearly was occupying that world and, you know, that cultural ferment, I think, it had a certain, you know, I I impact. This is, you know... It, that claim, by the way, you know, after spending more than a decade working on that that biography of of, of Edgar Gioma, who is known to be the, the the greatest liar in the history of motion pictures, that claim reminded me that had, a, that had almost an Olmerian, you know, uh, 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 hue to it, an Olmerian tinge to it. The, the claim that he'd interviewed Freud and Adler and Schnitzler and Richard Strauss all on the same day. It's like a scene out of one, two, three. Yeah, well, someone put that in the chat. One, one, two, three is wonderful skewering uh, of of you know of the of the U.S. corporate and political. I'm always system. glad to bring it up because that one gets you know. There's so much, there's so much gold in Billy that 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 something like one, two, three, which 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 doesn't in everyone's mind rise to the heights of heights, tends oh, to get lost. And, it's so and underrated. It's, it's so, so underrated, underrated. Is, is, what I'm, is exactly what I mean to say. But yeah. there are other movies that also look so. So Kiss Me Stupid did terribly when it initially appeared. And it, it, I mean, it's not his best work, but it too has some redeeming, redeeming features. But one, but one, two, three is, I think, a sort of hidden gem. I mean, I really think it's, 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 a, it's a great movie. The, 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 the comedy is, you know, is really, really red hot. The satire is just so, so edgy. Um, great ensemble cast. I mean, he couldn't get along with with Cagney. I think, you know, due to his, you know political uh, differences, but they they certainly got along. I think in 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 the, in the making of of this. Picture. Cagney's fantastic in it. Uh, uh, my my pitch for underrated would also be Sherlock Holmes. 
Yeah. And it did. Billy Sherlock Holmes. Forgotten. Uh, forgotten. And and you 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 get the sense of, you know, I don't know if Billy made many good mature movies as an older man. He really he fell off. So Sherlock Holmes brings with it, amongst other virtues, the fact that you see a grown-up Billy yeah. who's who's also making it, what is in many ways a masterful movie. Right. I have a certain soft spot for Fedora. <laughs> I, <think laughs> it, I do. Yeah, I'm leaving you alone on that one. <laughs> I'm leaving you alone on that one. Uh, um, but, but, anyone but else want right. to vote for was, Fedora? It was, very, it was very, very hard to come of age, I think, mm -hmm. in Hollywood, to come of age as an American writer-director in Hollywood, you know, at Paramount, then working independently with the Mirish Brothers, making all of these great movies, and then still wanting to go on. And I think it was really tough. Um, a lot of great directors of comedy do not have that third act. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, it's it's very hard to think of one th th that that finishes finishes strong. Yeah, no, there's there's another anecdote and I cannot put my thumb on which, which, which interview this one's from, but where late in life, uh, so maybe in his 80s, he, he, he goes to vid visit a young studio executive. He's hoping to you know, continue to do more, more movies. And this 20 something studio exec, maybe late twenties, uh, says, I, I, I hear you made some, some, some great, great, great pictures. Um, could, you, could you tell me about him? His response is, you go first. <laughs> says, is, oh man. Um, I, I have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one last request for questions because if not, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, does that seem appropriate? But I wanted, I, I, I wanted to share one image that I have that I don't believe anyone's ever seen. This is my pic. A picture was given to me of Audrey Wilder. Yeah. This is Mrs. Billy at at uh, uh, the New Year's Eve party, a legendary New Year's Eve party that Charles Lederer, the screenwriter, used yeah, to yeah. throw. And and that's. Uh, uh, that's just Audrey at, at the peak gorgeousness. That's priceless. You Isn't that great? That to me. <laughs> yeah, you, you put that in the book. Yeah, you exactly. put that in the book. That, that, that is a wonderful photo. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, have, we have one more question here. Um, oh, beautiful Audrey, someone someone said. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Billy would talk about, reminds me, it's also Audrey Hepburn's birthday, I think yesterday, or maybe, and, and Billy had a line that I will, of course, totally destroy where he talked about how he was in love with Audrey Hepburn and, 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 and was grateful. His wife was also named Audrey because he talked in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something That's like that. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I recently encountered this one too, and I, I have no attribution of it, but apparently he, 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 he mentioned, he, go, he goes to see a, a you know, a, 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 a performance of a Wagnerian opera. And, 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 and he remarks that, the, you know, the opera began at eight and three hours later, he checks his watch and it's 8.15. <laughs> uh, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, yeah. That, that's my new, that's my new <laughs> favorite. That's Somebody who's felt like that watching Wagner and I always thought it was me. And it I, tells yeah, you what Billy's priorities are also. Anyway, you know, yeah. let's, let's move this thing along. You know, that, that's that's Billy. And yeah. and 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 I think even though we have an hour, I think an homage to to, to Billy. Yeah. I think we should come in under feature length, just under. Feature <laughs> there you length. go. Um, All right. Uh, and and unless I'll pause for um, I'll pause for uh, another question if it comes. Oh, yeah. The, well, you got something else, Noah? No, I was just looking. I was looking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at the, at the chat, and I know I just, uh, the, uh, no, I think we're good. I think we're good. Everyone, you're a Billy Wilder fan. The, this book is, 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 is. I, I've, I've said. I think I wrote. This should be on your shelf with Cameron Crowe and Ed Sykoff's book. It, it, this is this is portrait of the artist as a young Billy, and, <laughs> and and it's it's short, it's tiny, it's a it's amusing. You eat it in little bite sized chunks. Um, if it, I, I can honestly say, if you love Billy, 
you, you'll be glad you did. Well, thank so, you. And, and you, you saw that, you saw that, Sammy, that the Skirball is doing a, a little course. I think, I think this is, it's, it's got to be a signed reading. I think it's, it's got to be a signed reading. Yeah. In the, in the Skirball course. It, 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 it would be a if it didn't make the reading list. <laughs> <It would be. laughs> For the okay. whole, under the whole neighborhood. Anyway. <laughs> good, uh, good night, uh, Noah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was so much fun. Thank you, yeah. Sammy. And, and, Thanks, I, and I'm sorry soon. if I trotted out too, mu too much Yiddishisms from my late Galicianer furrier grandfather who, who, <laughs> who, who taught me all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it, was, it was a blast. Thank you, Book Soup. And good yeah. night, Wilder fans. Yeah, thank you, Samantha. This was this was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was and great. Sammy, I will dance the tango with you anytime. So all right. Thank uh, you guys so much for watching. Thank you both for being with us from afar. Please purchase Billy Wilder on assignment at the green button right here. And we'll see you at our next event. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful it. night. Take thank good you. care. Thank you so much. Adios, guys. Bye.